Um, I've been. Uh, we've actually we've actually spoken some time ago. Oh, oh touch base. Yeah, oh, you all know, you won't remember. Oh, but, uh, I, I do. I do. Um, I was doing some. I was doing some uh, kind of music stuff, and yeah. um, someone, a common friend of us, put me onto you. Okay. And uh, you just kind of gave me some love via Instagram, and you said, you know, if you're ever doing shows and stuff like that, um, uh, to, to hit you up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I've been watching you for a while, man. I've been watching you for a while, but um, and funny enough. I feel like I've hit you up a couple of, or maybe you managed them a couple of times, so it was good that I, I got through this time, I, I stayed persistent on my part, yeah. but, uh, but um, man, first of all, man, congratulations on everything that's going on, uh, we'll get to your album, you know, we'll get to your album and stuff, and um, I'll be meaning to chat to you because, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I just feel like you haven't been... It hasn't been like an overnight success for you, and um, you know, yeah. And um, I actually got put onto you through mutual, uh, not even just through mutual friends, but other friends of obviously of, uh, of Indian background, um, and me being Tamil and whatnot. They always knew that I was always, you know, yeah. looking for people, especially here. Like my whole thing is, I want to celebrate our culture here, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I got put onto you. So, um, but man, just tell me a little bit. Um, Tell me a little bit about, I guess, just your roots. I I know I know from what I've read and, and from what you've allowed the world to know. Um, I know that you're a Liverpool boy. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about, I guess, your background, man. Like just you know, just kind of growing up and, and just your childhood and what kind of took you down the the music path. Yeah, man, for sure. Like, uh, firstly, man, I appreciate you having me here. Nah, and, you know, yeah. respect your platform and what yeah. you're building and. You know, it's great to connect on a level because, you know, similar to, to what you were just saying, bro, like, in terms of my journey, I haven't seen many brown folk, you 100%. know, especially in entertainment. Yeah. So, yeah. like, to see the prolifer proliferation of of people building their own platforms has been inspiring and, you know, it, it, it motivates me more and it just is one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I want to try and support my peers as best as I can, you know, and so for you to have me, man, like it's an honor and I appreciate being here. Mm, uh, likewise, um, likewise. I think for me, you know, like I, yeah, I was born in, born in Liverpool, lived in Glenfield pretty much my whole life and Glenfield is like an interesting place because it's, you know, I suppose on a surface level, it's the border of Liverpool and Campbelltown, which are very different culturally, but it's, you know, the border, border of Darug and Darwell lands as well. So it kind of makes sense that it exists between two spaces that are uh, quite distinct culturally, you know? And like, you could feel that growing up, you know? Like Campbelltown for me, like I had periods in my life where I really enjoyed going to Liverpool and other periods where I really enjoyed hanging out in Campbelltown and then other periods where I didn't like Liverpool and I didn't like Campbelltown. I had this real interesting relationship and that definitely kind of, I think speaks to just my experience of where I've sit my whole life, but also, you know, between two cultures of being a South Asian background mm. from Sikh community, Punjabi community, and being a part of the Australian community. And also just in my space within the music industry where I feel like I've never fit in anyone's lane. Like I've, I've, I've had to build my own lane. And, you know, like growing up, Liverpool always felt they're both, they're both raw, you know, Campbelltown, but Liverpool always felt more raw than Campbelltown. Campbelltown, for me, initially felt really more white, you know, and then over the years, I kind of just saw both spaces change, and Campbelltown felt less, well, Liverpool felt more hip-hop, and Campbelltown just felt more spaced out and, and less kind of congested, and, you know, it was an interesting kind of dynamic to kind of grow up in because, you know, like, it definitely informed my music you know like the experiences i would have in in either of those spaces changed over the years like there were moments where in liverpool i felt more appreciated and more welcome and more grounded from a cultural standpoint because i saw people from all walks of life more regularly and the hip-hop connection that was always there whereas you know in Campbelltown, you know over the years it felt like you know as it developed that it became more of a space where i could you know go to kind of chill, you know, not be in an amongst hecticness, but also kind of just, you know, reflect and appreciate, you know, the ways in which um, there was a, a, more of a range of artistic styles mm. than, than Liverpool. So like, it was, it, was, it was quite interesting to grow up between both of those places. Mm. Um, 
you know, musically for me, you know, I, I came to it through peers, you know, like my friends would pass down different albums. Yeah, and, for sure. You know, yeah. check this out. Like I grew yeah. up in a household where we didn't listen to any English music, you know, English yeah. wasn't the first language I yeah. spoke, it was yeah. Punjabi. So, you know, uh, my parents would play sick music, then or like, at the time they would watch whatever, you know, Bollywood or Punjabi movies or so whatever was kind of coming yeah. out is what I listened to. One of my cousins was a Punjabi DJ or like as a hobby and, you know, that yeah. was, was a thing. You know, and then, yeah, in school, it was like, that was when I got introduced to, to Western music, English music, and it was just like everything, pop, rock and roll, you know, whatever it might be. And then in high school, it was hip hop. You know, at some point, you know, one of my mates passed on an Eminem album, some Exhibit, some Wu-Tang, you know, like all that sort of stuff. And I just became so immersed in, in hip hop because it felt like for the first time in music, not only was I gravitating towards the energy, but I was was inspired by the messaging. The like content, I felt like I could relate to it. Connect to the know? content, yeah. Yeah, and even though I wasn't like African American, you know, from the States, I could still relate to the feelings of, you know, marginalization, of oppression, yeah. of standing up for what you believe in, of having confidence in yourself and where you're from and like all those themes like really spoke to me. Because it's part of um not even just I guess if we're talking about a whole, um, you know, the whole Southeast Asia where I and you come from, um, that's hev our history is heavily influenced by, by my, by those different aspects that you call, um, that you just spoke about, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's, yeah, it's funny because it's obviously, it's not so much about, um, it's something that I, I spoke about last week and I actually put something out on my gram about it because you know, sometimes you see things, you're like, man, I've got to say something, otherwise mm. it's just, you know, it's got to bottle up. And one of it was that it's racism level in my life it's, hasn't really been about just black and white. Mm. You know, uh, religion, language, um, so many yeah. things. It's infiltrated through so many ways, you know, yeah. um, and impacts people through so many ways. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, I could definitely kind of relate to that. And in terms of your love for hip hop, I mean, that's hands down the reason why I, I've always loved it and why I've always mm. gravitated towards it is because um, it's just you can always connect with the content you can understand um, it's kind of what I say like you can you may never understand the specific pain in what they are talking about or rapping about or the content in the music but you can like pain the feeling of pain it's just it's different different for different people right mm. like what's painful to me might be different to you right. but what but that feeling of pain you can understand and resonate with me because it's the same all across the board mm. whether you're in pain for it you know no. you lose a you know you lose someone and me in pain because man i lost you know, i lost this professional yeah. game or something you know yeah. a fight or whatever it is right how i feel you can resonate with that yeah, but, but the idea of pain differentiates amongst all your peers yeah. and whatnot, you know, so, um, and then, so taking it back, you got kind of influenced, uh, you know, you got thrown in music, hip hop music, got introduced to hip hop music, was it, was it kind of there that everything started to cultivate a little bit for you, that you started listening to more and more hip hop, and then, what was it like, you just started kind of writing? Yeah, I mean, that's a, like, well, I, I don't remember exactly, Yeah, it, it's all kind of like a blur, and yeah. I think, I think, when I look back at it, the biggest artist who really resonated with me the most was Tupac. Yeah. Right? And when I think about that, it's because he he stood for something. Mm -hmm. and he, he represented, you know, that message so well. And he spoke so confidently and so eloquently and so powerfully about, you know, his story. And... When I think about that, I then reflect on, okay, the first song I ever wrote was called Word of Discrimination. So what we were just talking about there, you know, like mm -hmm. what was my mind state as a 13, 14 year old? I don't remember exactly, but I know I wrote this song at 13, 14 and, the, and I don't remember the exact lyrics, but I know the message of the song was that I wanted to express what my experiences with racism mm -hmm. were and I wanted to talk about how messed up those experiences were and why, you know, why racism isn't a positive thing, right? Mm -hmm. And that to me comes from being inspired by 
Tupac's music and being, you know, him being so passionate about that message and his message. And when I think about me at that, my, my mind state was at that time, it was very much like a warrior mindset. Like I, mm. I was very much like I need to fight against mm. all the, the, the stuff that comes my way, which is why, you know, the name Fresh came about, you know, mm. it's an acronym for ever rising, exceeding sudden hardships. Cause that was my mindset. It was yeah. like, it doesn't matter what comes my way, I'm going to surpass it. Right. Mm. And, and that's what resonated with me in hip hop. And so I can't remember if it, like I sat with hip hop for a while or if I just started writing straight away. But like, I do know it almost felt like I was, I was so inspired by this music that it just made me want to give back to what I was listening to. It made me want to tell my story. Yeah. And it was the first time in my life where I felt like my voice was valuable. Mm. I hadn't had that experience before, you know, mm -hmm. I played a lot of sport and you express yourself through sport, but it's mm -hmm. different. It's, you're not using your voice necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're expressing your greatness or trying to reach a level of greatness through your actions as an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. But music is very much direct, you know, it, it's, it's what's in your heart and what's in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't had that space before where... Cause, and no one asked me, man, like from whether it was my parents or whether it was my peers or whether it was my school, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? Mm. No one asked me what do you what do you think about racism yeah, or like yeah. what what are your experiences with racism or how do you deal with it or how do you no one asked me but yeah. hip hop spoke to me mm. you know and so I had that conversation with hip hop yeah what was did you ever have a um is there a particular Tupac track that stood out for you changes bro yeah I, I won't even hesitate it was um, unconditional love <laughs> yeah, yeah it's my track yeah. I, we're a big like me uh, obviously I have older brothers and cousins so. Like, I didn't even want it, like, if he came over one day, you know, like, I'm sure it's your family. If you sat over a bottle of scotch, my God, man, it will not, the conversation will not end, you know what I mean? So, um, that's crazy, man. And talk a bit about, like, just, I guess, uh, just the album, like, Southwest, yeah, yeah. Um, as you got on your, on your jumper, coming out next month. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about your inspiration for that album and just, you know, kind of what we can expect and um, and congrats on your single, man. That, oh, that shit's catchy as, catchy as fuck. <laughs> my wife's been playing it all day because so I showed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going like, you know, oh my, oh my. And I've just been telling her and she's just been pumping it. And I was like, I go, this is, I go, this, this is who, who's coming on my podcast next. Yeah, and she's so. like, yeah, I'm like, you dropped the single, check it out. So I played it. Oh, Since then, she's had it on Spotify and there. She oh, loves it. It's catchy as hell. But, yeah, man, yeah congrats, man. Up. I, I hope it's, we'll say that again. I was so like, run the numbers yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, man. I was like, it was fresh, you know, because, yeah. uh, uh, no, no pun intended, but it was it was a fresh track because um, one of one of my favorite tracks of yours is um, Survive mm. uh, because um, because one of my favorite artists who I have his original album and you opened for was Nas mm. and um, I'll, we'll get to that because uh, that's like for me it's like man I can't even believe you got because he's a massive influence in music right. for me um, along with Tupac and stuff but man just. Um, it's funny with Nas, it wasn't the latter years that I kind of, the latter years is when I kind of got introduced to him. Mm. But the second I had, like God's Son, to me still was one of the right. one of his greatest albums. Yeah. But the when I got it, got to him at a latter part, I went back and just studied everything. Yeah, right. And then I just went back and bought Illmatic. Uh, obviously, you would know, it's arguably like the Bible of hip hop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously I knew that you opened for him and whatnot, but we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about Southwest, man, yeah. just what that album means to you. And um, I know off camera, you told me it's almost been sitting for two years, um, yeah. you know, just waiting to be released. So tell me a little bit about that. and. Um, just why why Southwest? I know you kind of touched a little bit about the origins with you know Liverpool, Campbelltown, yeah. the influence, but um, talk a little bit about that album, man, and uh, what it means to you, and 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 what we can kind of um ex uh, ex uh, you know, kind of get from it, I guess. Yeah, for get sure, from, man. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, like the initial concept of the album before I had the title was I wanted to write an album that my fourteen year old self who first came into hip hop would bump. Like, and I say that because like, I wanted to create something that, and we touched on it, like I couldn't relate to the experiences of, you know, my favorite artists from the mm. US. Mm. So what my 14 year old self was missing was hearing something from someone who looks like me mm. in that space that just sounded, that sounded cool, 
like and they wanted to connect to it just because it was like it sounded dope yeah. but also that it spoke to my 14 year old self directly you know and i think about that and again go back to where we started with our chat like in terms of the proliferation of brown people in in in, in building platforms and stuff you know like there's more for you the next generation to connect to that they can aim for and aspire to to be because you know people like us are creating the the, the standards mm -hmm. you know they can be like i can do that because you know bro's making this podcast and, mm -hmm. and, this, and this this content and and they can then see that and then think of what the next thing is you mm -hmm. know like i wanted that as a, mm -hmm. as a kid i didn't have that mm -hmm. there was no one who looked like me in music that i yeah. could connect to on that level so that was the initial concept. How do I speak to my 14 year old self? Then it was like, okay, well, what do I want to tell my 14 year old self? And this is where the journey of my whole life from 14 to now is reflected upon in the album and the lessons I've learned. And, you know, a lot of that is grounded in the area and, and where I'm from and those experiences, both positive and negative. But also I wanted to tie it to that, to, to where I'm from, because like, again, for my whole life and from day one, like the one of the goals I set out when I, was was envisioning wanting to become an artist was like I wanted to create something that anybody from the area could connect to could feel proud of and then could, something that I could do to give back to the area you know and that's always been my goal from day one and so now to be in a space where I can do that through music because I have a bit of a platform that you know people can be like you know what I'm grateful I came from this place a place that when we were coming up you wouldn't you wouldn't talk to people about being proud of where you were from in yeah, Southwest Sydney, of course, yeah. because it was like, oh, you're from there, yeah, you yeah. know. But now, you know, when I rock this hoodie, and I've seen my mates from high school who I haven't seen for ten years, and they they happened to be at a show, and they were like, you're wearing a Southwest, bro, that's so cool, like, mm -hmm. and you're talking about how you're proud to be where you're from, and then you talk about those experiences in the songs, like, I get it, that, yeah, I'm proud to be from Southwest, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, the mindset now is has changed, and and I want to be able to, to touch on that. I think, you know, what people can expect from the album is like, I'll sum it up this way. I've got um, another song coming out, which I feel like is the survive of this album. Yeah. It's called Mother Tongue. Yeah. And the song comes out next week. And like the, the song is a very personal reflection on my journey with my language. Mm -hmm. You know, so as I mentioned, I was, I, I, I was raised in a household where Punjabi was the first language, English was second. So growing up, I was fluent in my language. I was proud of my culture. I was proud of my language. Then you get to a point when you go to school and it's like, yo, anything that makes you stand out is not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visually already stand out. I wanted to touch on that because I think, um, not to kind of butt in while you're talking, man, but yeah. it's, it's, they look, especially, I guess, when you're doing something and you're creating this kind of platform, you looked at face value. Yeah, Whether right. you want to admit it or not, that's the truth, right? They see they see a Sikh with a turban and you, know, you can be a rapper. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you gonna rap about? You know? And that's just the truth. And 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 funny enough, I was, you know, talking to um, you know, some people about it and I was saying like, for me that was always the battle. Mm. Like it's not even just it's not even just the people that don't know you, it's the people that know you too. Yeah. Because they're afraid sometimes to to just to take what you're doing and wear it on their chest and be like, man, like that's that's my fucking boy. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause cause they're facing the same fears that you're facing or I'm facing when doing something like this, right? But uh, but but your way of handling it is through your music, is mm. through in in through all the, the work you do behind the scenes, you know? And and that that I feel like that is the the difference and battle between just kind of getting breaking that glass ceiling, and always being kind of captured and and kind of held held underneath this this standard this foundation where you just can't break out of because yeah. of all these little um you know kind of outside influences or perspectives or kind of impacts that it has on you yeah. in what you're trying to do. So I felt like I felt like for you to even get to where you are now, right? It was just a massive thing because I know what it would feel like yeah. uh, because I've had to kind of do things throughout my life, whether it's um, through sports or whatever, that I had to break the mold of where I come from. Like I've walked into gyms where, you know, um, there's Arabic, um, you know, um, uh, Samoans and, you know, boxing. And then here walks this, this Tamil guy with 14 letters and then like within two months, it's hugs and kisses because they realize that I'm a tough, I'm a tough son of a bitch, but 
it's you have to it's like you always have to prove it yeah. you know until you prove it ain't no one can accept it yeah um, and i find that special about you because of who you are and your identity and and hip-hop is so close to my heart like i, I love hip-hop and to just see how you've been able to establish yourself i always thought like especially you coming in today i always thought man like there's no way this was an easy road. Like yeah. just to break out of your own shell, your own community, your own world to come to kind of build that platform would have been hard enough and would have been would have been easy to say no, you know, instead of saying yes, like fuck, what am I doing? Like no one kind of can see my vision, you know, and, and it's because yeah. of where we come from and what we're told we're capable of. Yeah. Right? And 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 you you know, I'm sure you could speak to this, but ancestors after ancestors, they've only gone about life one way mm. you know and so in in my in i believe in our mind generation after generation it's almost like a disease because we're told that the capability is only this yeah and in anything above this you fuck you're wilding you know what i mean you you know you're, you're, you're overthinking and yeah. and you're just you know you're just kind of shooting for the stars um so i think that's you know, you should be applauded for that. And um, and I feel like you will be applauded for that when the day does come, you know, mm. where people look back and think, fuck, like, you know, like, it's so easy to just cringe and be in a shell because your persona or where you're from or the language you speak or your name does not resonate mm. with the artistry that you're trying to, to kind of build a platform on, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to, to say that before you continue, because you just kind of, when you were talking about the purpose yeah, of Southwest and really. what it stands for, um, I know for a fact that would have been something very hard for you to kind of break out of. Yeah, know? and I got, and, bro, as you were saying, I had a bunch of stories that, you know, touch on all of those things yeah. from experiences that also link in with a nice tour mm. thing, and, and, and I'll get to that in a moment. So, like, with this song, Mother Tongue, like, speaking about that journey, you know, like, being fluent in language and then not, and then going to school and it's like, it's not cool, you stand out, I lost pride in it. Mm. You know, and that's the byproduct of, you know, having a country that's built on colonization, but also, mm. you know, allowing that to seep into your own mindset, mm. you know, and, and, and taking full responsibility myself as I do now that I lost my language, you know, I lost it and now I'm relearning it. So that song talks about that. So when I go back to the message of the album was like, what do I want to tell my 14 year old self? It's a bunch of decolonized concepts of like, bro, like appreciate who you are, where you're from and where your culture is mm -hmm. because there's no greater value to you as an individual and what you can then offer the world when you when you tap into that. You know, I can't be a carbon copy of ex, you know, the next man or woman, you know, standing over there. I can't be J. Cole, I can't be Black Thought, mm -hmm. I can't be all those, you know, two part, whoever it might be that I look up to. And I can't be what Australian society asked me to be. I can't be what my community, my family asked me to be. I can only be me. Mm -hmm. And the the way the thing I'd say to my fourteen year old self is like, you just gotta trust in that man. Like you gotta trust in what that is and tap into your roots, tap into your heart and your soul and be driven by you know the the desire to live with a purpose not that just the desire to be great like you're talking about okay well yeah you have to not only break, break barriers by proving yourself but it's like okay well what are you going to do with that once mm -hmm. you get to that space and for me it's always been about having a purpose so like you know that song by the time to me speaks to the purpose of the album so when people cop it it's not on one level there's a confidence that runs through it because i feel like for my 14 year old self, the thing that I needed the most was confidence in my culture. So there's definitely confidence that runs through it from the songs like Alchemy to Born to Stand Out and Oh My, which have already come out. There's an extreme confidence in those songs. Mm -hmm. But the deeper layer of it is not just, okay, well, yeah, have confidence in who you are and where you're from. But it's like, you need that because the whole world around you in the space that you live as a third culture kid is gonna challenge you to not be that. Mm -hmm. Mm. So you need that confidence in order to appreciate what the value it is of what you have. And then the record goes deep into then what it means to, once you have that, what does that mean? And then what's the purpose of it? And how are you going to act on that? So that's what people can expect from the album. In terms of sonically, there's a lot of South Asian sounds, samples that are just a bed underneath the mm. record. And, you know, a lot of thought provoking stuff like, you know, even in the tracks that are that are really confident, there's layers of meaning where I touch on, you know, um, on, on shit that people only from our communities would know. So, mm -hmm. for example, in a song like Alchemy, which was the first single of the album, 
the whole idea of the song is that you know you you know you can you can achieve what you need to achieve depending on what your mindset is right like and you would know this as a boxer if you have doubts then you're when you step into that ring mm. your your flaws are going to be exposed yeah but if you have the mindset that you can turn that negativity into gold then you can achieve anything in that ring you know like the the possibilities are endless right but there's there's tracks there's lines in that song that touch on even what's happening now you know mm. like in the uk people are you know with the black, black lives matter mm. movement defacing winston churchill statues yeah the statues yeah, yeah, yeah and people totally. are like well, you know like why would you do that mm. i was like buddy yo do you know what he said what well, not only what he said mm. about indian people and south asian people but what he did mm. to south asian people it's like you know, he, he he was the main instigator behind a famine that killed mm. endless amounts of people, mm. you know, like in India, you know. Mm. Um, but he had the mindset and he said he had a statement where he said, you know, there are beastly people, mm. you know, they're, they're savage. So I have a line in alchemy where, you know, again, only our people are going to know this or mm. people who know history, which is I'm like, slow down, Winston, you might pop a vein while you're at it. Mm. I come from a beastly culture. My people are savage mm. with a level of devotion that you couldn't even imagine. So I flip it, you know, mm. like um, there's layers of that throughout mm. the whole record. I've got a line on a song called Forever Rising where I talk um, about, I talk about the, the, the queen, you know, because the mm. queen, her, the current sitting queen, her crown is made from the Kohinoor diamond, mm. which was stolen from Punjab, mm. right? And I'm like, you know, I, I talk about on that album, you know, just the whole mindset of like the, the you know, what we believe to know as truth is actually not true yeah you know like and and, and i say you know um tell the queen we want our crown back yeah you know? yeah it's fucking dope. <laughs> we want, we want our crown back. It's fucking um, dope. so you know there's 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 all that throughout the yeah. record you know i think it's a lack of understanding um like you said man i think especially now especially in the last six months for me i've just been feeling very strong about like yourself, my history, our place, mm. you know, going way back to like the, yeah. the Dravidians and, yeah, yeah. you know, like going way back. And I don't think people really understand the British and their place and their whole, you know, the whole colonization of Southeast Asia and the impact mm. that it had there and, and, then, and then the result of that, you know. And I think, you know, it's always arguments and whatnot, but if people really go do their research, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not something people are trying to hide. It's facts. You can go and read facts. And I think, you know, a lot of incidents even now, right, with, with everything happening in the US and in the UK and, you know, with the whole movement, that it, I feel like there's a, there's a lack of understanding of where all this is coming from. And mm. it's being looked at as a as a individual situation mm. um you know and it's not an individual situation these things are carried on for hundreds of years generation after generation right but like anything right it's a matter of when does that that bubble burst and yeah. the second that bubble burst right it just goes into chaos and all people see is that isolated incident but these things are not isolated these are things that have been um, carried on for generations after generations. So I think you know history is such a big uh, aspect of of just understanding where and and how and why does someone think the way they think. And I think yeah. it's important in your music to um, from what you've said. It's so good that you've included that aspect in because you would know sometimes living in a Western world, man. Like when you got it good, you're kind of like, yeah, I got it good. But I don't think you should ever feel com be able ever feel that comfortable because like for me obviously I wasn't born here I was born in Sri Lanka so yeah. for me especially in the last six to eight months not that I never cared before but now I was just I'm oozing with energy to be proud and to kind of mm. talk about it and, and represent where I'm from because there's an important part in history like yeah. uh, whether it's Hinduism what if there's an there's a there's a place in history in yeah. human history yeah. um, where where thing. you know where they're at the top of the line and for, so for me it was it really hit me in the, in the last six seven months where I was just like man like 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 I got some work to do you know and um, and you know like you man when I was 14 15 16 uh, you know I'm trying to hide who I am because yeah. I'm too busy trying to fit in especially yeah. coming from Sri Lanka right. Yeah. Like you, like uh, I lost my mother tongue, yeah. right? I could always understand because, you know, because of my parents, I need to know what they're talking about, right? So I would always understand, but I was just too busy trying to learn the ways because I wanted to fit in, you know? And and you don't realize until you get a bit older that you're like, 
it's fucking pretty fucked up that I had to fucking, I had to behave like that. I had to think like that and be like that because, you know, but now, you know, the different artistry, the different, um, the different cultures, the different, um, the languages, where we come from, it's, it's like a cool thing now. It's a cool vibe now. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like, like, yeah, you're from there. Oh man, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, you know, I've, 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 I've I'm good friends with uh, guys that organize Afrobeats. I'm actually doing yeah. a little feature piece on Afrobeats this yeah. weekend. And man, you know, you know, dance hall and you go there and it's just like, who's who's there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I talked to one of the organizers, a good friend of mine, shout out to Nick. I was like, you know, and I'm going to talk to him about this when we sit down and do this and just like what it's like to look back and, and look out and just see like, like Southeast Asians, um, white, you know, white people, um, you know, and, and, and people from, from, from like, you know, whether it's South Africa, wherever it is, right? Like different, different cultures coming in to listen to a music, um, uh, music style or an origin from, from Africa, you know mm. what I mean? And it's just crazy. And like, you know, and like my wife's the one that introduced me to dance hall and it's not just the commercial stuff, like the hardcore, right. like, you know what I mean? Like you need to really know that genre to, to yeah. be able to kind of, um, know some of these artists, right? Yeah. And um, I just, you know, yeah, and it was just, it really stood out to me, like, and I realized that, man, like, I got a job here to do, because like you, with what you're trying to do with the album, talking to your 14-year-old self, or even kids coming up, yeah. like, dude, like, who you are and where you come from is the coolest shit, man. Yeah, I, Don't, like, you're going to realize one day it's the coolest shit. Yeah. It's what makes you who you are. Yeah. It's what makes you alive, you know what I mean? So... Um, you know, I think it's important to, to, to be able to kind of let the younger generation know that, Hey, don't, don't lose, don't lose touch. Cause it's much, much easier for the next generation to lose yeah. touch from where they are. Right. For sure. Um, you and know, one thing just to add to that, yeah. like, sorry to cut no, you no, off, no, go like, for it, man. Yeah. it's important, not just from an individual standpoint, but even from this context, right? Like when we know where we've come from and we know what the the the, the culture is and, and all those sorts of things we can really start to imagine and reimagine what the world could be in those in those or inspired by those values and those cultures and those things so like, let, let me say this for example we have the shared experience in australia where the very real byproduct of a policy of assimilation and the very real byproduct of a country founded on the notion of white supremacy where, you know, white people are seen as greater has been that we feel like we have to abandon our culture in order to fit into this society 100%. and get along. And now people can say, okay, well, maybe it wasn't as bad as such and such and such. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like, that's just what you have to do when you go to a place. You have to, you know, fit in. And, but that's a very different value set from going to a place that respects who you are, what you stand for, and what you and what you're about, and then allows you to express that in harmony with its own space because it's not insecure. It's insecure by the fact that you're different. Hip hop is the perfect example. We have been embraced by hip hop, and hip hop welcomes people and appreciates your authentic, encourages your authenticity, your culture, and your contributions that you are able to bring. Mm -hmm. Now, going to my own culture, I can imagine a world that is different from the present place that I am in because I know during uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's time when Punjab was its, like, its own sovereign space, mm. its own sovereign nation, mm. that it existed under different sets of governance and rules, but also that it was a universally... Uh, it universally appreciated everybody from all backgrounds. There was no policy of assimilation. There was no policy of like, you have to do this in order to fit in or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was like, you are who you are. I appreciate everything. So I say that to say that, yeah, it's important for us to know our culture and where we come from and all that sort of stuff. Not just so that we can be, be um, sound and, and grounded in, in who we are and to feel good about ourselves, but also so that we can imagine and reimagine the world despite the the context that we live in in order to address some of the the greater issues of our time like look at for example the resistance of the you know the black lives matter movement in the states has now resulted in you know the city of minneapolis to disbanding their police department mm. to look at different ways of community mm. policing and safety in australia 
you know, like when we think about the context here and indigenous people have been asking for their own, have been fighting, well, on one level, been resisting since colonization and, and have been fighting for their own sovereignty to be able to, 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 to govern their own affairs, right? Mm. And we know that this current system is killing them, mm. you know, lower life expectancy and all those sorts of things, right? So, you know, but come coronavirus time, you know, the federal government allowed, in, you know, First Nations communities to self-govern based on their models of, of health in order to work out what was going to be best to, to protect those communities. And they've been so successful in terms of being able to protect their community. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's using their models and their cultures to be able to do what's best for themselves and their community. So, like, they, it's using their culture to, to bring into reality a way of being that is, you know, theirs, you know, mm -hmm. and that is best for them, you know. So, like, tapping into our cultures is important because we can look at the issues of our time and imagine a way of dealing with those issues, knowing that we have models and that we have, you know, problem solving abilities through those models to be able to imagine them, not just for ourselves, but for those around us. Um, and I think that's, that's important because we're, we're seeing as shit's unraveling. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Current status quo. Yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of, part of, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to achieve without going into too much about it because it's about you and not me, but is I want, I want the history and, and all those little moments in history where there were very um, vital moments that changed the course of history, right? I just, more than anything, instead of just being the typical person that kind of barks, is promote, go revisit it. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're in a time now where I feel like all these issues, whether it's um, uh, whether whether it's the whole Black Lives, uh, the movement, and whatever it is, uh, whatever different kind of you know movements that are happening around the world, right? I feel like right now there are certain there are certain parts of history that's getting revisited, mm. and that's kind of what I want for for the Tamil people mm. is I want our history. I just want people to go back and revisit and really understand what happened. Yeah. Right. What? And how, I realize it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's cool yeah. to do that. It's yeah. valuable to do that. Yeah. And like, and like the information's there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, we, you just literally go to Google and you can go down the rabbit hole. You know what I mean? And go find out what you want. And you don't have to listen to me. But what I want you to do is you go do the you go do the readings. You go do the study. You yeah. go do the 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 go go obtain the knowledge to understand why things are the way they are now and you'll know and you'll have a better understanding and you can be probably more empathetic for those people to be like oh fuck like the course of history kind of sent them down this way you know yeah. so um you know i feel like there's so many people just always kind of you know telling you what to think and for me i feel like okay i'm going to tell you what to think but i want you to go and revisit certain aspects of history and I feel like right now with what's happening with um, the black people and and um, just the whole Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like it's a catalyst for so many other social issues and things around the world that have just been buried underneath and hoping that everyone's kind of forgotten. I feel, I hope that these stories get revisited too because there's, like we spoke about, right, uh, with, with racism, it's through religion whether it's through religion, whether it's through language, whether it's through, um, you know, your social status, so many, so many aspects, right? Racism infiltrates through. So I just feel like there's so many, so many important aspects in history that, that uh, you know, people from, from different cultures have had to kind of deal with, right? Yeah. Generation after generation, uh, you know, and I just hope that this just prompts these, these, um, stories to be revisited so that people can get a better understanding you know and i feel like that's really what it is if you can exactly. get a better under understanding of what someone's gone through man you can start to think oh i can see why yeah. it's played out this way you For know sure.
But um, tell me a little bit about your um, man, uh, your experience opening for Nas, and yeah. and what was that like? And um, I'm sure you got to meet him as well. Yeah, very yeah. briefly. Yeah, briefly, very briefly, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. that kind of felt for you? Because I know, I mean, obviously, I know you're a hip hop head, but yeah. man, that is something. Whew, man, it was. That, a, yeah, you're bro, talking God MC, you know? Yeah. So like, yeah, what was that like, man? Well, it was a dream. Like, it was yeah. definitely a dream, and I, I think I got it way before I was ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Where was that at? Was that at? That wasn't at Edmore, right? It was at Edmore. It was across the country. So I did four shows on that tour. I'm pretty sure I was there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I got played at yeah. Edmore. And yeah. um, it was Nas's first headline tour of Australia. Yeah. I had just turned 21. And initially, I was, you know, I, I'd been speaking to a mate of mine who um, got me on the tour. Yeah. And um, it was initially, you know, he was like, hey man, I got you your first national tour. Yeah. Because up until that point, I hadn't released anything commercially. I'd done like mixtapes, EPs, yeah. all that sort of stuff, printed yeah. on my own home printer and or doing short runs. Yeah. And I was selling them myself. And, you know, he's like, I got your first national tour. On this tour is for sure, it's going to be Charlie Tuna, you know, DJ Cuba, MC Supernatural. I was like, sweet, that's crazy. And they were like, he was actually like, crazy too. Yeah. Oh, man, man. He's, got some, he's got some mad wow, talent. He's crazy. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. And then he was like, Headline is going to be most deaf, and I was like, Yo, most deaf, yeah, like, what the crazy. hell? Like, man, that's so cool, one of yeah. my favorites. And then he calls me like a week or two later, and he's like, Upset, she, and he was like, Man, uh, most deaf's not on the tour anymore. And I was like, Oh, sweet. He was like, Yeah, but they got someone else, I don't know if you know, and he's not a hip hop head, so like, he didn't know. Oh. <laughs> he was like, They've got this other guy, Naz. Yeah, he said, and I was Naz. like, He said, Naz. I was like, You mean Naz? He was like, Yeah, I was like, No, no, fucking way, man. Like, yeah, no, I was like, oh, do you yeah. understand like who you're talking about right now? He was like, man, and I remember because uh, I was living in my grandma's old place at the time, and I remember when he called me, I was, I was literally, I just got home from, I think it might have been like work or uni or something, and like I was standing at the front door, I remember that moment, and I was just like, man, this is crazy. So yeah, I just turned 21, I went on this tour, and I was like, I knew people were going to be checking for me. Nas's first headline tour of Australia, yeah. the national support Australian guy is this dude, El Fresh. Who the yeah. hell is this guy? Yeah. You know, like, why, yeah. why are they Hilltop top hoods on this? Why aren't yeah, 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 this? Yeah, like, yeah. Who at the time, those two were, and hoods are still the biggest, you know, mad love for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, them and Bliss and Esso were the biggest at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, I took it in stride. I was like, well, let me show people why I need to be here, yeah. you know? Um, and it was a crazy experience, man. I've never been that nervous before in my life, you know, before each show. But I also was motivated because I had good people around me who were motivating me yeah. at that time and just putting positive thoughts in my head, like, you deserve to be here, like, you know, yeah. use this opportunity, use this moment. Um, and it was a vibe, man. But definitely what we spoke about before, you know, like people, because I had, there was two layers to it. One, there was people who were checking for who I was. But then there was also just the general ignorance of, you know, like what you were talking about before, you know, people, as soon as I stepped on stage, would have a, had an expect, had a perception of who I was. Mm -hmm. And I remember vividly the first show was in Perth and I got on stage and, you know, it was silence and you could hear, like I could hear what people were saying. So I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm -hmm. Like, look at this Indian dude, like, mm -hmm. and I'm censoring like that, like, what I was, what, yeah, what yeah, I heard. yeah, 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 and people laughing and shit, and I'm just like, man, this is fucked up. Yeah. But like, as soon as I open my mouth, two bars in, and I kind of anticipated this might be, might be what happened. So yeah. I, I started my set with a acapella. Yeah. So it was just me and my raps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two lines in, captivated people. Yeah. By the end of that, they're all like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the person at the back who was saying some racist shit at the start of the set, by the end of it, was at the front rocking. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. Dumb, like, that, that's like that's fucking amazing to see. Like, you know, it would man, be amazing to see. Man, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and it made that tour made me a much better performer because yeah. I had to one. Like I said, I've never been that nervous before yeah. in my life. But you know, it was a great tour to be on, man. Like hanging out with Super Nat, Cuba, mm -hmm. Charlie Tuna. Like Charlie Tuna took me out to dinner one night with like, yeah. him and his wife, and you know, like. He didn't have to do that. I had conversations yeah. about spirituality with Supernat. He was telling me about his meditation techniques. Yeah, yeah. I had chats with He would look like a guy who had yeah, a good, yeah, good spiritual yeah. conversation with him. Yeah. Yeah. And Cuba was asking me about my culture. Like it was just great great yeah. vibes on that whole tour, you know? Yeah. And like but the other thing was like 
on that tour, yeah, like they were showing me love, but like most of the venues and, and most of the people working those venues, again, because they didn't know me, were showing me no love. So it was like, you rock up, if, you're, if I get a sound check, I had a sound check, it was like 10 minutes. And anybody who knows music, 10 minutes is just enough time to set up. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. enough time to have a set. Mm. 10 minutes if I had a sound check and I wasn't allowed to stay backstage after the show. So if I had bags and we were touring, we were kicked out after as soon as you perform. The only show I was allowed to stay backstage was the Sydney show. And that yeah. was because by then people had developed a level of respect. You know, yeah, 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 like, oh, yeah, this guy's yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. So... You know, and, and that was where I met Nas briefly, and it was just, you know, my, he was just walking past, and he's a real exclusive guy, like, yeah. he would only rock up 10 minutes before he went on stage, yeah. and then we'll bounce straight after, yeah. like, and I've learned over the years that, you know, he's that kind of guy, you know, and my whole thing was just like, bro, respect, thanks for having me on this tour, and that was it, pound, and, you know, move on. Yeah. So, like, but yeah. It's just been amazing, movie. right, just to be in the presence of someone so highly respected, like, People don't realize that, you know, I always talk about energy and I don't think they realize that, man, sometimes you can just, that energy that you feed off can just be the difference between, between, you know, like you said, like, man, I was sitting there thinking, oh man, I hope like a bit nervous as opposed to like, fuck, I'm opening for Nas and like, you know what I mean? And, and you got to show, showcase your skills. And, and for me, like Nas's life was my shit. Yeah. You know, like I remember vividly like yeah. watching it on Rage, 2 a.m. in the morning, and as soon as that song came on, I was like, man, I can achieve anything. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that, yeah. So when he performed that live at yeah, every yeah. show, bro, I went yeah. off. You know? I was at the Sydney show, now I remember, man, I was at Edmore, that's what I was asking you whether it was at Edmore, I was at that Sydney show, I remember. Mm. But I think I, like, I would have rocked out probably like, just as Nas, I think, was yeah, coming yeah, out from yeah, there. Yeah. There was a few of us, man. Yeah. But I remember I couldn't wait. I got, I had, um, no, you know what show it was? It was, um, it was, it might have been after him and Demi Marley uh, dropped the Stronghold oh, thing. Yeah, because I, I had, wish I, I had, saw that show. Well, I had that album because me and my mate went and made singlets with yeah, the album yeah, covers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because that's how much I love the album, I went and bought the album too, man. And I remember that. And I had the singlet on. It was, they were, they were performing at one of those, um, Good vibes, remember when yeah, good vibes yeah, used good to be vibes. around? Yeah. yeah. And then he did it he did it he did a Sydney show and I went to that too. I remember I went to that too. Yeah, but that was yeah, yeah, that was dope. I remember that. But um man you, you um I and I've read a lot about you doing a lot of work outside, like helping a lot of the youth in um I think the name was Street University. Yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about that because I, I you know, I was very it was very inspiring to to, to kind of read about that and see that aspect of your life. You know, obviously everyone mm. knows you through music and, mm. and, you know, and I guess the close circles know the work you do. So talk a little bit about what that means to you and kind of how you're involved with um, helping a lot of these youth and I guess uh, aspiring artists yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the, 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 you know, I'm driven to do that on two levels. One, I'm participating in hip hop and it's an adopted culture for me, you know, and so like, if I'm participating in something that's given me so much and I wasn't a part of the struggle that birthed it, then the least I can do is give back, you know? So it's like, okay, well, that's one one way for mm. me to kind of do that. Um, is to pass that on, but also to pass on the knowledge of where hip hop comes from that I have learned, appreciated to, to the next generation so they can be mm. aware of that too. Um, but also just, you know, for my, my, you know, being a Sikh, you know, like for my community, mm. like one of the core values is you have to serve you have mm. to give to the to, to the world around you. And so mm. like I'm inspired by those two things to, to be in that space. And you know, I am not who I am but for my ancestors and those and the examples they set for me. And you know, I'm only I, I can't even live up to one percent in terms of the service they gave to the communities and the world around them and them standing up for social justice, human rights issues and all that sort of stuff. But like if I can achieve any of that, like even one percent, then I feel like I'm doing something, you know. Mm. Um so it I have to do it, you know, it's my duty as a, as a member of the Sikh community to do that, mm. and I love that. Um, and so, yeah, you know, one way was using my strengths, and that's music, um, and, you know, Street University in Liverpool was the first one that was set up, and I was a part of the, the team that helped establish that place, and I was there for about four or five years. Mm. Um, and then off the back of that, you know, there was the Street University in Mount Druid, there's one in Canberra, there's a few oh, more. Okay, so there's like multiple of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it was just about, yeah. for me, it was always just about like learning from everyone who came in, but also just using my skills to as a, as a musician to teach people how to best 
communicate or how to best get their stuff out, you mm. know, and whether that was helping them in the studio, teaching them how to record themselves, or you know, helping them with branding or putting songs out and all that sort of stuff. Everything whatever. that you never had and had to learn. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, so many artists have come through that, man. Like so many artists have come through that model of and have been touched by Street University in some way, shape, or form. That even now, like years later, I'm like, you went through that. They're like, yeah, man. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, man, I'm. I feel grateful to be out of contributed to that space, which is now birthed some, you know, put on for the world some amazing shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, for Southwest Sydney, it's like artists like Jessica Jade, mm-hmm. who's dope from you know R and B hip hop vocalist from from Liverpool ways. Um, a girl is from uh, Granville, uh, went through Street University of Liverpool and also um, Mount Druitt. Um, you know, uh, Soul Benefits, a group from out Mount Druitt ways came through the Mount Druitt space. Um, you know, I remember bumping into Cursor at one of the MC battles that we used to host in Cursor, Liverpool. Yeah. You know, he came through trying to perform there yeah. at, 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 back in those days. Miracle, who's blessed music, yeah. performed at a Street Uni event. Uh, one four came through Str- uh, Street University Mount oh, Druitt. Yeah, yeah. um, like you know, it's touched so many different mm-hmm. artists, man. Like so many different people have have either been through that space, even if it was momentarily, or have developed through that space. Mm-hmm. And you know, to know that you know I was able to contribute to the foundation of that, man, it's a, it holds a special place in my heart. It's a way of giving back too, right? Yeah, and man. it's so. I mean, it's so good, man. I mean, I was like, it's not too really kind of the whole I guess the uh, whether you know you want to call it this kind of southwest movement mm-hmm. or music but um that's something that I always found difficult to find yeah. was the platform when I was kind yeah. of when I kind of you know migrated here and then kind of after kind of leaving high schools when I was getting into the whole entertainment thing yeah. whether it was music whatever like I actually started writing first before even recording a track but that was always the hardest thing for me to be able to find. So to hear that those platforms exist and, and slowly building and probably only can get better yeah. with the success of yourself and, and all these other artists, one four and everyone, um, it's it's just good good to see that it can only get better from here, for right? Sure. And you're only gonna be feeding feeding more aspiring artists and more for people sure. that want that platform. And I think it's so important that it exists because it's something that really bugged me for a long time because I was like, man, like how does someone be able to build that platform, you know? And and I grew up like, man, since I was 18, every day, I was shit you not, man, every day, the first thing I do in the morning is I grab my coffee, I sit in the computer, and I read up on hip hop news. And like anyone in my circle knows me, man, they no one touches a high five system when I'm around. They're like, oh, and they make bets. They're like, yeah, yeah. you know, how long is it gonna be till I say, can I, can I connect yeah, my yeah, phone, yeah. you know? That's like, I love it, bro. Like everything that I'm building and I'm trying to build is off the back of what I studied yeah. that was happening in the US with their radio stations, whether it's Power 105, Hot 97, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it was. Like every, I just every morning to yeah. this day that you're sitting in front of me, that's the first thing yeah. I do, right? And um, that was my teacher. Yeah. And when I was about 21, 30, I'm 30, I'll be 33 this year. When I was 21, 22, I, I, I forced, I just had this, vision that one day Australia is going to have that same platform that our culture is going to unite whether it's music food and whatever it is right it's all going to interconnect the way that entertainment connects in America and Europe and I just felt like we hadn't gone there yet but I knew we're going there and it was just going to take a matter of few things to kind of you know set that path uh, path uh, path but um you know I just find that it's so important and I think one of the things that you know, whether it's just a podcast or whatever else that I'm doing was uh, that I wanted to build was that like we've grown up listening to hip hop, you know, whereas whether it's Wu Tang, Nas, Park, uh, Biggie, you know, whoever you wanna you know, whoever you wanna name, right? LL like we need to start appreciating who we have here because like you said, man, Southwest, the whole idea of Southwest, the album you're speaking to your peers, you're speaking to the people around you. And that's something that I always wanted, um, you know, funny enough, is that I want us to now turn back and say, yo, like, like the guy I listen to just lives, a, you know, he's from an, an area an hour away, you know, and it's time to kind of build and celebrate our world. culture. It's, it's not definitely mean? happening now. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. And, it, and if all these things, when it happens, I always, you know, look at the people that have been there from the start of mm-hmm. my journey 
and they're like, shit, man, you're talking about that. You're talking yeah. about that. And I'm like, it's starting to happen now. Yeah. And, you know, I was even telling my wife that the, uh, the energy's good. Now yeah. it's a time for me to, yeah, like, so even with Mercenary Entertainment, I, the name, I trademarked it when I was 21. <laughs> like, that's when I trademarked yeah, it, man. Yeah. I, I didn't want anyone to touch it. It was, we were, we were um, making a beat and we were just spitting some freestyle at my mate's house. He's a DJ. Um, shout out to Mahesh. Um, <clears throat> and he, and then we went to the park and then, I just had this, you know, yeah, like you're yeah, yeah. you'll know, man. You yeah, just had this sure. thing, yeah, and and mercenary entertainment, and then the whole idea was that you know mercenaries are hired to fight a private, you know, fight for their own gain. And I said, man, as human beings, ultimately we are here for our own gain. But what we do with our own gain is what um, what differentiates us, you know, yeah. um, you know, with and and that's kind of how I came about it. And I remember I trademarked that we were moving houses. And she saw, she saw the papers and she's like, what's this? And I explained to her and she's like, well, why'd you stop? I said, it's yeah. not that I didn't stop. It's that I need a place to start, yeah. um, you know? And, and I, I had I'd always uh, kind of played with it, but then it's not till kind of the last year, two, three years. And then especially now, I feel like, I, I just feel, yeah. I feel like the energy is coming back to me now through what you're doing with so many people doing. I'm like, now there's a place for it. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? So, um, yeah, this, the time, just it just stars at to align. Yeah. And I feel like the stars are aligning now. And I could really see, um, my ultimate goal, man, is to build a platform just like Diddy yeah. built a platform with yeah. Google TV, with whatnot. Yeah. I, want, I want to build something that unites our culture, you know, whether it's through documentaries, whether it's through music, through podcasts, through whatever it is, I want to build yeah. a machine, you know, and yeah. that people get to kind of, yeah, and and celebrate people like yourself mm -hmm. and, so, and and let people know like, yo, like your ears are, your ears are on, um, you know, um, kind of in Europe or in America or whatever, but man, we got some talent mm -hmm. here. It's like, how do I, what can I do to kind of get this talent? and we need other people to kind of jump on board and, and actually invest in this talent, mm. whether it's music or whatnot, and bring it to a platform that, you know, just like how we wait to listen to music, you know, from our favorite artists or watch content from our favorite artists or actors or whatever, we need to have that same kind of enthusiasm and energy for people here, you know, but it only starts with having a platform to build for it sure. off, you know? Definitely. So, um, but yeah, man, look, I don't want to, um, kind of want to end it on, um, so you're signed to Elephant Tracks, yeah, right? Sure. Before we kind of cut out, I just wanted to touch about that, just how that came about, yeah. and uh, just a little bit about, I guess, uh, you know, just the creation of the label, and, you know, because you guys got a few guys signed, signed to it. Yeah, yeah, well, Elephant Tracks, man, they've been 20 plus years. 20 plus you years, know, well, there you go. Been yeah, 20 yeah. plus years, bro, and like, yeah. what I love about them at the foundation was a group called The Herd, yeah. and The Herd were always about they have people from all different walks of life, yeah. you know, one of the guys in her Sri Lanka background, bro, oh, right, 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 right. Um, and you know, like all different backgrounds yeah. and their music was political. Yeah, yeah. It was about something. Yeah. And they set up Elephant Tracks to distribute their own music. And I got signed to them after I put out my first album. And I'd been, I opened up for The Hurt um, before the, that mm -hmm. album came out, well before that. So when that album came out and, you know, I was looking to expand my career, it just happened that who was the right fit, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everyone who was in hip hop or who were fans of hip hop in Australia, if they were to pick a home for me at that yeah, time, yeah, yeah. they were like, it had to be Elephant Tracks, you know? And so it just happened to be the yeah, right yeah, fit. Yeah, you know? yeah, right, yeah. Right, I'm going to have to take Yeah, it. yeah, that's all good, man. But listen, man, I. Uh, Hold on one second. Yeah. Hello? Hey, it's Joe here from Happy Guy. I'm doing good. How you doing? Yep. Um, and then we'll come to you and you'll be chatting with Abney for probably like sort of, yeah, four to five minutes or so. So yeah. if you're all good for that, I'll just be able to hold you to be able to hear a bit of the program. Yeah, all good. Sounds good. Awesome. And just check, you'll just dial in and go, yeah, it's fine. I'm here. Like, not yep. Not to speak, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. good. Sweet. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> you got three or four minutes. No, that's all good, man. We'll leave it there anyway, man. But yeah, if you want to I appreciate it. you coming through, no, man. Yeah, honestly, bro. man. And, um, man, uh, People can find your album, obviously, when it comes out on Spotify. Yeah. They can catch you on Insta, follow you on Instagram as well, El Fresh yeah. Line. Uh, man, honestly, appreciate it. It's um, it's something that I was looking forward to for a long time uh, to link up with you and to chat to you. I felt like uh, there was similarities there, and you know, just in, in what we're trying to, I guess, uh, achieve in our own way. But man, um, 
all credit to you, man. What you're doing is great, and uh, man, we appreciate you. And, and uh, man, can't wait to see where you take it from here. And um, I'm sure, um, I'm sure we'll link up in the future yeah, at some point, man. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, appreciate it, brother.